It's Monday, December 29th, 2014. I'm DX Features Editor Andre Grant, and this is the DX Daily Year End Edition. Our festivities continue with Underrated Album of the Year, Mixtape of the Year, and finally we get to talk Album of the Year. And here to talk about it with us is our media coordinator, Sparkle Pratt. Sparkle, hey, what up? Hey, what's How up? you feeling? I'm good. How are you? No doubt. Up first, we're talking Underrated Album of the Year. Congratulations to the runners-up, Cormega for Mega Philosophy, and Rhapsody for Beauty and the Beast, and Mac Miller's Faces was the winner. Let's talk a little bit about Rhapsody Sparkle. She already won Underrated Artist of the Year, and now she's a runner-up for Underrated Album of the Year. What does she need to do to take it to the next level? I honestly don't know what Rhapsody can do at this point. Um, she's one of the dopest lyricists in the game right now. Not female lyricists, but one of the dopest lyricists. And I don't know if the world is ready for such a raw and uncut female in this day and age right now. I mean, she doesn't have necessarily a gimmick going for her, and she's not as provocative as most of the other females in the game. So it's really hard for her. But, I mean, I love her. She's dope. And I just really hope that this year, well, 2015 is her year. I hope so as well, man. I don't, I don't know what she needs to do. Um, she's, she's done incredible things already. Her last two mixtapes were really, really well touted. Hopefully the landscape changes and she can get over in 2015. But let's talk a little bit about the winner, Mac Miller's Faces, right? It was druggy, it was jazzy. But what's next for the Pittsburgh MC? 2015 is looking really promising for Mac Miller right now. He just signed a deal with Warner. He's killing it with the productions under Larry Fisherman. And I think that people need to really start taking him seriously. People tend to think he's more of like a parody rapper or he's just a real funny, crazy rapper, but he's actually pretty dope. And if people will take the time to listen to him, I think they'd actually like him. I think so too, man. He's diversified his bonds. He's getting money from a lot of different places. Absol loves him. I love everyone Absol loves. So that's how we're gonna rock it out. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. Up next, mixtape of the year. Huge congratulations to our runners up, Vince Staples with Shine Cold Chain 2, and Sci High the Prince with Black History Project. And huge congratulations to our 2014 mixtape winner of the year, Rich Gang with the tour part one. We've been talking about Vince Staples a ton this year. So let's focus on Rich Gang. Dre, how unexpected was the goodness of this mixtape? So unexpected. I think that after Black Portland, people got really hip to Young Thug. Mm -hmm. Last year he was kind of a, you know, nobody. But after the, after the uh, success of Black Portland, people got really hip to him. Then it was all the remixes, right? Of Danny Glover, Nicki Minaj's great verse. And then after that, to have him come out with something like this, right? And the chemistry with him and Rich Homie Kwan is really real. No one really knows what he's saying on Lifestyle. No one. No, not a I person. mean, I kind of do. But <laughs> do you? Yeah. You had to look it up, right? Yeah, I did a couple of times. No doubt. But no one knows what he's really saying. And I think it's, I think it's amazing. He's got his own language going on. I don't know how effectively those two can replace Lil Wayne, if that's a thing that's going to happen. But I do know it shines a light on the kind of the weirdo Atlanta scene right now with him, Father, McConan, as well as Key. And I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know what 2015 has to offer for him, but I'm looking forward to really great music out of that guy. Um, I agree. There's a time and a place for Rich Gang. And when you want to turn up, it's definitely something that you can pop in and listen to. Every song will have your head banging. I mean, like you said, you don't know what they're saying, but hey, right. I'm here for it. Exactly. Congratulations to our winners, Rich Gang with the tour part one. And let us know what you think about it in the comment section. And finally, we get to talk Album of the Year. Congratulations to our runners-up YG for My Crazy Life and Freddie Gibbs and Madlib for Pinata. And super duper congratulations to Hip Hop DX's 2014 Album of the Year, Prime. But let's talk about My Crazy Life a little bit. Sparkle, what do you think about it? I thought it was one of the dopest conceptual albums that dropped this year. He did an amazing job of painting a full picture from the top to the bottom of the album of what he went through in, in his crazy life. I think nobody's been able to really do that in a while for the West Coast. Besides like Kendrick, we had Good Kid, Mad City, and I think YG's album was the showed the picture of the bad kid in the Mad City. It was a complete, you know, opposite. He followed up with nice visuals that completely captured each song. Then he had his documentary, Blame It on the Streets. I think it was dope. I think so too. I think that YG and Mustard kind of crafted the sound for the West Coast this year. And I think that album ushered in the reign, the renewed reign of like West Coast hip hop. It was the opposite side of the coin to Kendrick. It was like, well, like what you said before, it was the bad kid in the mad city. And I think that that was incredible. And I think that YG has a lot to say. People don't usually look at him that way. 
and I'm curious as to what's going to come up for next year. Well, I noticed a little theme in our winners this year. We had like one MC, one producer. And do you think that this is something that's going to be that you're going to be seeing a lot more of late coming up? I think so. I mean, you had Primo and Royce for our winner, right? Prime. And I think that they just have an incredible chemistry with each other and it really came out on this album. And I think that that's something that happens when you only have one producer and one MC. I think that um, there's less money in the game as well, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't just go around having 10 different producers You're on right. the album. I can't even understand what those splits would be like money wise. So I think it's just a good idea for people to have one MC, one producer. It's what hip hop used to be about. And I think it's, a, it's, 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 an, it's an idea whose time has come. I agree. Definitely. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. And as always, for more music and news, visit hiphopdx.com.